knew I was gonna do this eventually, but we uh, had a little desk tour section of the original studio tour, and of course, people were interested in the, uh, the desk setup tour. So, what better way to get into the nitty gritty on the studio channel than to do the desk tour? Okay, so this is gonna be one of those like super well, pro highly produced desk tours with glorious 8K B roll of everything. I'm gonna actually get into like everything that's actually on my desk. I didn't clean it. Everything that I actually use on the regular to get stuff done. And uh, hopefully it's helpful to people. Hopefully there's some inspiration to be had. So right off the bat, it is a standing desk. So the desk itself is a custom sized X desk, but an S X desk air pro, right? It's this huge thin sheet of metal and it's got these telescoping legs that have motors in each of them. And the thing about cable management that everyone likes to always bring up is it's, it's, there's lots of exposed cables down here. You see the computer, you see the cables coming up to the stuff on the desk. It's because there's a lot of stuff on the desk that needs power from down below. But one thing this desk does have, if you come in here, you can see that, right? Sure there's, can. There's a bunch of uh, power. All the things that are on the desk, I try to plug in right here. So that's one sort of tip is it could be way worse, but uh, anytime you have a desk that changes heights, you can't really cable manage for both heights. So I've done the best I can. Okay, um, that's the desk. And I guess the things on the desk, I'll go from left to right. Some of the stuff I've had for way longer than others. I start with, this is actually a mouse pad and it's a little red mouse pad that just adhes, adhes, adhesives, Adhere? adhesives, adheres, adheres to the desk. And uh, it's on the corner of the desk because I just put stuff over here that I kind of just have on the ready all the time. These are a pair of AirPods Pro. They're actually painted by Colorware and they are super sick. These never leave the studio because anytime you get something painted matte black like this, they, they can scratch really easily. So I don't do anything too crazy with these um, other than edit. And yes, I do edit lately with these wireless headphones. The, the, the sound quality and the lack of lag is just good enough for me for editing. And the transparency mode is nice because when someone else wants to call me from next to me or somewhere else in the studio, I can still hear them. So I've been using those. Um, but other stuff, like I have a flash drive here. This is a USB-C to USB-A, both versions available. One little flash drive, that's nice. Tesla key card, a really sharp unboxing knife. Shout out to Peter McKinnon for recommending this knife. It's a ProTech and it's very sharp. Uh, hand sanitizer, some keycaps. I have a iPhone 12 Pro Max that is used for social media posts a lot and a water bottle, stay hydrated. But uh, I put it on this like little mat here so that stuff doesn't scratch the desk. There is a, a layer of white paint on this desk that I learned the hard way, because I've had previous desks, can be scratched if you're careless enough. If you unbox something on the desk and like slice the desk, you'll get to the metal underneath. So that's why that's over there. These are the studio monitors. Yamaha HS8s, this might be the longest running thing in the setup right now. Uh, eight inch woofer, one inch tweeter, and they sit on these Oralex acoustic little foam pads and they, they're on this just so that they don't like rattle on the desk and they're totally isolated. These sound amazing. They're extremely accurate and can get very, very loud. Um, and they're driven by the Apollo Twin, which I'll get to in a second. But if you ask Andrew or somebody else like out in the studio, if I'm like editing and it plays a sound of like my voice, it might sound like I'm actually talking to them, so I have to use the headphones most of the time, otherwise it sounds like I'm talking to people through the speakers. Can confirm. Yeah, so other than that, that is, that's the main audio stuff you've seen. This is a Promise Pegasus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight times 12. I believe that's 96 terabytes uh, of hard drives in here, and they're just backups. So a lot of people ask about backups for like footage or video files. I only save typically the final exported video file, the thumbnail, and some key clips. If there's any key stuff that might need to be reused later. Other than that, get rid of it all. So I've got like some raw footage, but really not a whole lot. Like interviews and stuff like that are cool to keep, but um, all of that is locally backed up here if it's not in Google Drive or Dropbox or YouTube.com. So. The, the monitors up here are Pro Display XDRs. These have been great. These both have the nanotexture coating, and 
turn around over there, you see all these lights and the windows? That would actually all reflect quite a bit if I didn't have the nano texture coating. So I'm really happy about that because I did have glossy monitors before. And this has been a huge win. I am a side dock person. So if I'm ever in here, you can see the apps I have open. Yeah, I used to be a, I used to be a bottom dock person, but I'm, I'm happy with the layout. I usually have some combination of windows open here. I got Discord open. I'll just go ahead and type a little eyeballs. You guys only always see me typing in here, but well, I'll pretty much always be in here. So stay aware of that. Um, there are no webcams built into these things, so I do have a Logitech Pro webcam at the top and it like magnetizes to the top right here. It's built for it and it plugs in via USB-C to the back. And the other thing that plugs into USB-C on the back is the dongle for this MX Master 3. So this is my mouse of choice. It is laser etched. Logitech decided to go out of their way and uh, put MKBHD on the mouse, which is cool. Pro tip though, for anyone who has one of these Logitech mice, you can either use it on Bluetooth or with the, uh, the little dongle that comes with it, which is USB-A. Always use the dongle, but also if you put the dongle too far from the mouse, like I used to plug it in in the Mac Pro down there, and you have this huge sheet of metal in between, that was enough to get it like stuttering and have all sorts of weird lag and input issues with it. And so I found that just by bringing it up back here, it's easy, it doesn't lag anymore, and it's great. So. Big fan of that mouse. Been using the MX series for a long time too. And uh, this is a, almost the same mouse pad. This is kind of a funny story because the I had a different version of this mouse pad. It was, it was like square and much more firm. And I like imported a couple of them from Japan. And as you use them, you like slowly wear down the fabric and eventually they get kind of like old looking. You want to replace them. And uh, I couldn't find them anymore. So this is the closest I could find, but I think they just stopped making them. I should have just bought way more. Uh, either way, Black Magic trackpad over here, and a Keychron K2, I believe. Is it K3 or K2? I think it's the K2. It's K2. Yeah, and it's got a bunch of custom keys, and it's nice and heavy and metal. So my setup here is I've got my Magic keyboard over here for switching between, sorry, Magic trackpad for switching between spaces, and I always have a couple and then the keyboard in the middle and the mouse. So I'm like a three input type of person. I feel like that's not as normal because um, you still can do spaces with the, the mouse, but that's my current setup. I really only use that for scrolling and spaces. Um, and then over here, like I mentioned, this is the Apollo Twin Mark II. It's a space gray. It's almost the same as the Mark I, but we've got it here powering any headphones I use that are wired or all the time these HS8s and this is literally a basically a glorified volume knob. I don't use any of the, you know, plugins and instrument recording and stuff, but I do love this for uh, preamp and for powering all my audio stuff. So that's good. And like the cable management back here, like tucks right down into the desk. And then that's the mess of cables you see behind it. That's going to each speaker. That's going all the way to the Mac Pro. It's a lot. I have a 16 inch MacBook Pro over here. This is like the work machine that just goes into every room and is either like audio recording or screen recording or like whatever it needs to do. It's just a workhorse that just moves around everywhere, so that's cool. It's got a bit of a skin on it too. And then the other monitor. So that's like the, the surface. I've got some charging cables up here. All they're doing is plugged into the, the desk and that's a lightning cable and a USB-C cable. I used to have a wireless charger up here, but I don't because I just find plugging stuff in is faster. So then you get under the desk. I guess this is a good place to start. This is maybe the second longest thing I've had in the studio, which is the Herman Miller Embody. Anytime anyone asks for a chair recommendation, I go, what's your budget? And how, how long do you spend in a chair every day? Because for the $1,000 or 1200 or whatever that we spent on this, for the like decade I've had it, it's been worth it. Easily my favorite chair ever. So shout out to Herman Miller, big fan of this. And then down here is uh, the little artisan bar, whatever this is called. I just kick my feet up on here sometimes when I'm editing. And then the Mac Pro, which is the, uh, the machine that powers everything. So there's a mini mag USB reader. There's not a whole ton of USB-C ports back here. So this is going into USB-C. This is a CF card reader. 
And this is my SD card reader, so anytime I need a SD card, any audio, any A1 footage. You and Brandon. Yeah, I don't know. It's not the neatest solution, but I mean, this is it. It's just where I plug things in. Um, but yeah, everything else that's plugged in on top of the desk, like the speakers, which are through the audio interface, they're all through here. And I find that that's the best like version of airflow going through the machine. I could go forward with it, but then it would be kicking out hot air onto the wall, and that's not as ideal for airflow. So I'll, I almost got like a thing to hold it right here, but it didn't support the full weight of the Mac Pro. And it was kind of sketchy having it like dangle here, so I didn't do that. Um, it would have been cool for cable management though. I think that might be it. I'll, I'll, over here I've got my presets. So the way the desk works is it's got preset one, two, and three. And I can just move it up or down manually if I want to. But if I want to go to preset number one, which is standing, I just hold it. If I go to preset number two, which is sitting, I hold that. I don't have a preset number three. I could, I could make one. Um, you might notice there's not like any drawers or anything. Like there's not a whole lot of storage. I do have some other stuff like a cabinet here for documents and some like color charts and random other stuff that shows up behind me in the videos. Also behind you over here, there's like a, a corner of this central desk, which I often have all the storage on. Any SSDs where we're moving footage back and forth. With recent devices, I just had to pop one in the embargo box so we didn't have show you guys anything you're not supposed to see. But that is my desk. That's, that's basically everything that happens over here. I don't know, there's not a whole lot of spicy, crazy, I mean, this wired keyboard setup is probably the weirdest thing on my desk. I wasn't really much of a wired or mechanical keyboard person up until the last like year or two. And then I got really into these and I'm a big fan. And I don't think I'll go back. Um, latest version of Mac OS, Final Cut Pro. There's a lot more stuff we can talk about workflow wise and I'm sure we'll do some of that and show you that stuff on the studio channel. But yeah, that's it. That's the desk tour. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Peace.